Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a Kentucky man is charged with murder for killing a boy while under the influence and behind the wheel. And the cleanup in western Kentucky continued yesterday after flooding earlier this week. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is 5.33 on July 21st. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, in my mind, I'm just telling myself that I'm we're going to have a good weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully minimal rain. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to keep saying. Exactly. So next week it's not going to be so nice. So enjoy the next couple of days because after after tomorrow and Sunday, it's going to start to heat back up and there'll be a bunch of temperatures with nines in front of them. And when you factor in that feels like temperature later next week could be 100 or better. All right, let's talk about what we know this morning, we're still tracking some rain across parts of southeast Kentucky, well, eastern Kentucky and southwest Virginia. Not quite into southeast Kentucky just yet, but it's east of Pikeville this morning, kind of the south of Phelps over toward the Feds Creek area, heading back over uh, toward uh, Grundy over in Buchanan County and then all, all the way over into parts of uh, the rest of the region that kind of out of our area over toward, uh, let's see, Russell County and back over toward a couple other counties over that way. So again, we're keeping an eye on that London Corbin Airport. No major issues out there. This morning it is mild and muggy. I can tell you that when I walked out the door this morning, whoo, kind of slaps you in the face just a little bit. Not too much fog out there, but there is some, but you can tell where the cold front is. 66 Indianapolis, 66 Columbus, still in the 70s on the other side of it, with the exception being Knoxville at 68 this morning. Breakdown for today, 83. I do think we see some clearing skies for a little bit this afternoon, not taking the rain chances out completely because I know how this goes. You take the rain chance out, you get one little sail, and it's like, well, okay. So we're going to keep those in there for a little bit, not only today, but through the weekend, because especially as we get those warmer temperatures back. We could see a few pop ups in the afternoon hours. We'll keep you posted and have more on this forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Olivia. Thank you, Brandon. A McGoffin County man is facing charges of rape and sexual abuse in a 2018 case. 47 year old Anthony Talby of Salyersville was arrested Wednesday. Court documents say Talby first committed sexual abuse and rape, forcing a person younger than 18 years old to engage in sexual contact and forcing them to do so without consent. Talby is scheduled to be back in court in September. A Kentucky man is now charged with murder for a crash that killed a two-year-old boy. Police say Nathan Miller was driving under the influence at the time of the crash in Clark County when Thomas Reed was killed. After Thomas' grandmother learned Miller was in jail, she thought that ruling would bring her peace. Instead, it caused more irritation for Millie Reed was three times the legal limit. You had no reason to be on a road drinking or driving. Now that Miller is locked up behind bars, Reed is trying to make sure nothing like this happens to another family. Although she cannot bring her grandson back, she's sharing her story in hopes that it can inspire others to stop drinking and driving. After a 12 month investigation, officials with the Floyd County Sheriff's Office say they found a substantial amount of drugs, gun, drugs, guns and money. During the investigation, deputies were able to get search warrants for a home. Officials searched a home on Conley Fork in Floyd County Wednesday evening. They say they found significant amounts of fentanyl, heroin, meth, marijuana and other drugs. They also found guns and money inside the home. Deputies confirmed some of the guns they found were stolen. Josh Bideson, 39 of David and David Kraft, 56, were arrested and faced several charges, including drug trafficking. Police in Knox County are investigating a vandalism case at the Gray Cox Cemetery. Officials say they received a call about it yesterday morning. When deputies arrived, they reportedly found several urns, headstones, decorations, and stands that were destroyed. Officials estimated it cost, caused thousands of dollars in damage. Police say one person was charged with criminal mischief, but that person's name has not been released. New Kentucky State Police crime statistics show animal cruelty, cruelty cases increased 19.53% in 2022. In 2021, there were more than 700 cases. Last year, 
there were nearly 600. In 2022, there were 477 animal cruelty arrests in the state. This year before, there were 257. In the new KSP crime report, animal cruelty is one category that saw an increase in both offenses and arrests. There is now a reward in the search for a missing Wayne County man. Ricky Griffiths disappeared around July 4th of last year. His family says he vanished after they received some questionable text messages. His phone, car and wallet were later found. Earlier this year, Cajun Coast Search and Rescue came up from Louisiana to help in the search. A reward for information that leads to the recovery of Griffiths remains is now up to $10,000. People in far western Kentucky were still cleaning up yesterday after the flooding. Many roads were closed yesterday afternoon due to high water. Authorities were urging drivers to be very cautious when it comes to getting out on the roadways. Senator Mitch McConnell released a statement about the flooding. The senator says first responders moved quickly to rescue and evacuate those impacted. He says he is thankful for their heroic work to keep Kentuckians safe. The senator says his team is in touch with state and local officials to help however his team can. A group of volunteers from Michigan made a stop yesterday in eastern Kentucky to spread hope to those still rebuilding from massive flooding nearly a year ago. WYMT's Jordan Mullins has more from Wayland where he spoke to those with the group and a homeowner who told us a bit about her story. In the Wayland community of Foy County, Mary McKinney was one of many who watched floodwaters rise around her home nearly one year ago. When it started getting underneath the porch, coming through the porch, I was panicking. It was something that I wouldn't want anybody else to go through. On Thursday, Appalachian Service Project brought a group of volunteers from Michigan to help McKinney and her family rebuild. To have this space to serve is just so, it's so special and eye-opening and it really lets us almost reset. Those with the volunteer group say it is an honor to make a difference, but the relationships they build with those in the community is unmatched. The thing we find and catches a lot of people off guard, especially the first year, is just uh, how special uh, we're served from, from the people as well. Men and women, young and old, showing compassion and spreading hope. I didn't think nobody cared enough to help me and stuff, but these people did. They reach out, reach out to me and done the work. I thought it was hopeless, but they showed me different. Helping those in a time of great need. In Floyd County, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. McKinney and her family have moved back into the home since the July floods, but say there is still plenty of work to be done and wanted to thank everyone for all of the help she has received. Kentucky Power has filed for an 18.3% increase in residential power bills. An economist and professor at the University of Pikeville tells us this increase would cause a ripple effect in people's budgets. It could mean Eastern Kentuckians have less money to spend for other things. Everything you buy takes a certain share of that money away from you. So if I increase the average power bill was quoted to me as $365 a month. If I increase that by 18%, what that means is I now have less money to buy other things, uh, especially if I'm on a fixed income. Dr. Green believes the increase is probably due to price increases the company is facing. Earlier this year, we told you about how some storm relief checks meant for Western Kentuckians were mistakenly sent to Northern Kentuckians. Now a larger investigation into relief funds is being called for by State Auditor Mike Harmon. Governor Andy Bashir reacted to Harmon's decision to investigate the Team Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief Fund and the Team Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. Harmon, who recused himself from the audit, responded with this. I would say if anybody is accusing us of being a partisan, then they really haven't looked at the full body of our work. Last month, lawmakers expressed confusion about how funds were distributed. Governor Bashir maintains his administration will cooperate with investigators into the funds. 
Kentucky Senate President Robert St Stivers joined University of Louisville President Kim Schatzel in touring Redbird Dental Clinic. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox details how the tour shined a spotlight on a partnership helping the region. The Redbird Dental Clinic is a health care hub for people in multiple counties. In the southern portion of Clay County, next to Leslie County, Bell County, Harlan County, Knox County. Through a partnership with the University of Louisville, advanced health care is brought to the area. A lot of people don't realize this is about as state-of-the-art as you can get if you're sitting in Lexington or Louisville, but it's sitting in Redbird. Recently hired as the UofL president, Kim Schatzel made her first trip to see how the partnership is making an impact. We want to just work for everybody in the Commonwealth, so I was really pleased to be able to be asked to come um, and to be able to meet everybody that's here uh, and got a big warm welcome. I'm learning a lot as well. Through the partnership, industry students also clock in hours going from the city to rural Appalachia. Coming from Louisville, we're in like a metro area, you kind of see a different um, patient base. So coming here, it's been really nice to see these patients that are so appreciative of the work that we do. With multiple sides benefiting, the partnership has led to progress. Well, and we have dedicated to work to be able to uh, make it a place that people want to live, can prosper, and to be able to work with the communities to be able to do better bringing advanced technology to urban and rural communities. In Clay County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Senator Stivers also says the partnership has lasted around seven years. When we return, AMC Theaters changes a plan to charge more for seats higher up in the theater. And we're expecting one more day of kind of active weather before things start to calm down with our pattern just in time for the weekend. I'll have the latest in about three minutes.